a log cabin quilt pattern, but right. somebody could do a unique spin on a log cabin quilt pattern, publish it and make it, and then put it out there for people to buy. Well, then the intellectual property gets, if you make a quilt based on that pattern, is it really your design? Is it really your quilt? Do you have to give credit to the pattern designer? So there's a lot of, um, you know, back and forth thing with that. It's not so much with the art quilts, because as you've seen, the art quilts are, are very, very unique. Uh, right. It's more with the, the traditional quilts and the traditional patterns that have a different spin on them where the intellectual property gets a little, um, a little, little dicier. So, yeah. and I know you talked to um, Heather Kubiak. Uh, yes, we did. Uh, yes. Is, and I, uh, right. She's a fabulous, fabulous resource in, in that she area because really she's is. A lot and the quilting background. So she's joined our project. So she's going to be doing oh, some of the good. interviews, which I'm super yeah. psyched. And I think she may even, if you're cool with it, come chat with you and your staff a bit more in person of sort of to get sort of the inside sort of how does this work or, or have questions or other things. So we'd love to know more about sort of the process. Yeah. I just chat with chat. She just came on board yesterday. So, yeah, um, okay, good, uh, good. so I think she's great. Um, I think she's amazing. And, and what she does at, uh, the, the classes she taught um, are really um, informative and helpful. Um, and I think a lot of times from our side of it, from IP side of it, we're not that helpful, which is scary. So she's not that way. She, uh, she actually does give people um, ways to sort of deal with the problems they're facing. Um, have you all ever had any problems with intellectual property in terms of the show or the quilts or the exhibits? Have you ever had any issues? I know some shows had because they were doing some stuff, but uh as a as a company, generally, no, I can't recall um, like an incident or anything like yeah. that. Because um, when when somebody sends us a quilt for display, you know, we have a form that they fill out, and we always put you know design source or inspiration or something like that. So they have an opportunity to tell us when they submit, you know, oh, this quilt was based on so and so's pattern or inspired by the work of so and so. So we always include that with the signage you know, where it sometimes gets, you know, interesting is when the person who provides us the quilt doesn't, doesn't tell us that, or doesn't think to include it, not necessarily maliciously, just, you know, not, not thinking. So, but when we find out something like that, we always make sure to make a correction just as, as quickly as, as possible. So, but um, in terms of the quilts that are on display, I, I can't think of an, an, an issue where somebody has really brought up, uh, you know, said, hey, that, you know, quilt is stealing so-and-so's idea. Right. Well, that's really a, a testament to the thoroughness and making sure it's all uh, proper, um, which is really interesting. Right. And uh, then even when, um, you know, when it's like quilts are based on, you know, photographs or, or something like mm -hmm. that, you know, we always try to include in there, you know, based on the photography of, of so-and-so. There was a, a, an IQA quilt was a winning quilt last year. That was a, a picture of a man's face and, um, you know, somebody said, well, that's somebody else's work, but the quilter had gotten permission from the artist, from the photographer to use that. Right. She just hadn't put it on her paperwork because, again, she was, it, there was a little language barrier too in there and she wasn't sure about it. But, you know, once yeah. that came out, you know, we made sure that that quilter did have permission to, to do that. Um, the last question, and then I'll let you go. And I'd love to keep chatting with you as we go with this project. Um, sure. I loved the spot in the quilt festival where all the different um, sort of charity or groups um, to, was towards the back. That was right. kind of really, really remarkable. I just want to know how that began and sort of what <clears throat> role does that play in the, uh, the quilt festival? Yeah, well, we call them our, our interactive booths. And it's just really, really grown over the years. It started with you know, there are always like a, a few organizations that do quilts for charity or things like that for the, uh, like, a, you know, making quilts for the Ronald McDonald House was an right. early person. Um, there was also Project Linus that started, you know, many, many years ago. Right. And what they would do is they would, you know, want tables or want a presence at our show. Well, they're not really selling anything. Right. So we didn't want to, you know, we just would felt feel wrong to like charge them like a regular booth space. Yeah. So we decided to set aside this area for these more you know, charity and, and, and outreach programs. And it's, it's just really been a phenomenal success. It was it's grown amazing. and grown, I mean, grown yeah. from like maybe four or five tables to, I think there's, you know, 15 different organizations that all somehow have a connection to quilting and social outreach and, and community yeah. outreach and things like that. So 
Awesome. Uh, we've been really, you know, really, really heartened by the response to that. It also brings in a different, you know, group of people. There are people that might not have ever go to the quilt show, but they're involved with, you know, a charity or, or an organization mm-hmm. or something like that. That's and, very um, cool. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a really, really, really cool, cool area. It's interesting to see how many different types of causes or organizations can find a common ground in quilting. Yeah, and it was such a, I mean, it was really a fun, fun area. When yeah. I got there, I, I couldn't get out. It was really, um, really remarkable. Well, um, so do you do that at other shows too? Do you, do, is that always part of your shows when you're even traveling or is that just in Houston? Um, we, it's, it's always part of our festival. We don't uh-huh. do it for the trade show because mm-hmm. it's a diff, completely different audience. Totally. But um, yeah, obviously the, the largest section of interactive booths is always in Houston because again, Houston's kind of the, the epicenter, the, you know, the mecca of, of all things quilting. We have a smaller version of it at our road shows and they mm-hmm. tend to be a little more localized than, than, than the national organizations that tend to come to Houston again because it's a much, much larger show. Well, it's very cool. Well, we might be hitting you up. I, my vision is like we can get some interviews and, and people on camera of like why they quilt and who they are and make them part of our podcast research as much as the big designers who are willing to come on too. So we'll yeah, actually, to and, uh, we actually do something like that with another organization, the, uh, the Alliance for American Quilts. They always oh, have, cool. uh, uh, they have a, like an interview booth section on the show floor where people come. I forgot what the, the title of it was. Um, go go tell your story or something oh. like that and they just have average builders come in talking about their quilting experience and journey for um for you know for a, a documentary project so oh yeah, that's great something that. like that with, yeah. with you guys would be would we would love it. No problem. Yeah. Oh, that'd be great. Well, we should really think about it because I think that was one. Th- I was pretty shy about talking. I mean, we got lots of people's cards or whatever, but I think at the right. show, having a live podcast and being able to sort of talk about like, so why are you here and why do you quilt and how much you how much you think? What was your budget? <laughs> Did you go over it? <laughs> like yeah, that was a big thing of people like yeah, well we we plan, but it always my part one of my partners that was there, one of my um, quilting army partners, she was like. She bought a gargantuan thing like five minutes in. I thought, oh my god, we're not we're not going to get out of here in a reasonable way at all. Um, no, but that's I, um, the joy. I, I got. I just recently got a very nice thank you note from a quilter I had sent some tickets to the show to. Uh-huh. And she wrote me back, and, and she had mentioned in her note that before she went to the show, she called her credit card company and told them. <laughs> You're going to see an awful lot of crazy oh my gosh. charges in a short amount of time. <laughs> They're crazy. all legit. So she called them ahead of time to let them know that. <laughs> well, I was at, what's the spree? The um, the sample spree? Sample and spree, I, yeah. I was using my law school credit card because it's part of my law school, right? So I quilt for the law school. Um, and so I bought one thing and then I bought a, a tiny thing. Like I was pretty good about not buying things. So I was there, but then I bought a second thing and it declined the card. And I thought the law school is good. There's some trigger of like, somebody's gone crazy at a quilt shop and we're, you're a law professor. So knock it off. Um, so yeah, it made me laugh really hard. Like no rulers. We're not, we can't buy rulers. So, um, well, it's super, uh, this is just a delight and a joy and you're just my favorite. You're just amazing. Sort of what you have, you personally just make it a lot of fun and your staff was amazing um and it was just a great great week and a half and again i can't wait to keep working with you and chatting and we'll definitely think about uh that booth thing that would be super great to be able to capture people's um stories and particularly in different spaces that would be really great so i yeah, do hope to get to Chicago. i really do i hope i can make it to chicago this year because i would love to um to see the difference of what the shows look like and and who's there and and how it operates so yeah yeah chicago as i mentioned a much much smaller operation but and it tends to draw um the, the, i'll say one interesting thing about chicago is uh the houston show draws from all over the country and all over the world the chicago show tends to draw from illinois and that kind of five state midwest area so they're not we and then we've done studies that there's not a ton of crossover like there's not a, a lot of people or a large percentage that go to chicago and houston so chicago the Chicago show tends to be a little more, a little more localized, a little more regionalized, or a lot more regionalized than, than the Houston show. And how do you think, and I'm sorry, I keep asking questions, but there's just a thousand. How do you think it's different than, say, Paducah or Vermont? Have you been to those? And sort of how are you guys different than QuiltCon or Road to California or those um, other ones? I've not personally been to, to any of those shows, but I've, uh-huh. I've probably seen them, you know, right. pictures and seen them online. I think in terms of things like, like QuiltCon, 
Mm-hmm. Um, you know, it's, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a much more specialized interest. You know, mm-hmm. our shows tend to be about all types of quilting, art, yeah. traditional, you know, whatever. Yeah. Um, and Quilcon is, is a specific, you know, focus on modern quilting. I, I, te- I, I always use the, you know, I tend to compare a lot of things with music. So I always say like, you know, there's a difference between going to a, say a, a, a classic rock convention versus a Beatles convention. So right. that's what we, you know, we see shows like Quilcon, they're, they're targeting a very specific interest. I think where we're different than Paducah is obviously Paducah is a different experience because the whole city gets involved right. and there's, you know, it's, it's spread out all over the city yeah. and it's more of a, it's more of a, a, a quilt show and also, also a tourist experience. Whereas right. with our show, we try and put everything under, under one roof. Interesting. So it's, um, Interesting. yeah. So yeah, it's, it's a different thing. Like when people come here to Houston and quilt festival, they're typically not, you know, necessarily being tourists at the same time, like no. going throughout the city, what they want to see is all in that convention center. That's right. Whereas Paducah, because it's spread out through the city and they also have, get city funds, you know, right. to, uh, to help them put on the show. And of course it's, it's much more of a city tourism draw. Interesting. And then how was it to have the world series? It's the last <clears throat> question, the world series happening as the, uh, with the Houston in the world series, as all of this was happening this year. Well, it's actually not the not the first time that happened. Back in two thousand five, when the uh, the Astros were in the World Series as well, um, it was going on at the same time as our quilt show. And actually, uh, the New York Times did an article because all the baseball people were trying to get hotel rooms, and they were right. hotels were telling them you can't. The quilters have bought all the rooms, and this <laughs> this was you know enough of a, so an great. anomaly to make to make <laughs> that right. news. What do you mean the quilters have the you know, the rooms? We're <laughs> This is the right. World Series, uh, but they uh, that since the Astros lost in four games, th- there was only one game that actually went on during our show this year because it went on on seven things. It was a lot more more involved. So I think it was probably pretty exciting for people out of town to be in Houston at that yeah. at that time with, with everything going on. Yeah. Um, you know, you know, we were very happy. Of course, all of us being from Houston, it was a very exciting for us yes. just as a city. Yeah. Did it present some challenges to us logistically and transportation wise? Ab- absolutely. And uh, I would say on the day they had the Astros parade on Friday, we took yes. you know a hit in attendance because yeah. a lot of people that would have normally come right. to our show on Friday were like, right. I am not going anywhere near right. downtown and you know, yeah. they shut off the streets. Yeah. So, um, you know, it was very, very exciting, but you know, it, it also gave, presented us with some, some interesting challenges so as well. It- it was funny at the hotel, they had like an army of people out and they could tell who the quilters were because we're kind of, you know, you could tell that we're the quilters and not the baseball people. Yeah, yeah. Um, but they would, were handing us their cards. You probably know this, but they each were handing us their personal cards and like trying to make sure we were all super happy because they'd been invaded by the baseball people. It was very <laughs> funny. So like, you just call this number and if you want room service and you know, it was very funny. Oh yeah, no. You and know. that's, I mean, and the, you know, that's another you know thing about the business side is, you know, we partner with all these hotels and so we have very good relationships with them so and that's smart on their part because they know they're gonna have the quilters every year right the baseball right they're be loyal to certain hotel chains but right. you know, baseball may happen you know once every once every so often exactly so they were they were quite lovely and they're making sure we all felt uh loved even though there were swarms of baseball people in the in the lobby so it was back in uh i'll, I'll tell you this real quick but so back in 2005 we had three huge events going on downtown at the, the exact same night. We had the World Series game at the stadium. We had our preview night for Festival of George R. Brown. And then U2 was playing over at the Toyota Center. Oh, my gosh. So it was a oh, weird that's combination of that's a players, lot. baseball fans, and rock and rollers that were downtown that for that one night. That Our, is a lot. It was nuts. <laughs> that's nuts. That's yeah. craziness. Well, thank you so, so much for um, all your time this morning. And I really yeah, do look forward to chatting more with you. And let's think about a booth. That would be really fun. I would love to gather capture stories um in different spaces it would be really interesting so yeah that sounds good i'll make yeah. sure you get all the materials about okay. the that we put out about the chicago and, and portland shows coming up okay. in the spring so you just you know you can be informed nice. of that all right cool all right okay. thank you so thanks all so right. much we'll chat soon all, all right, right. Bye. bye so this is elizabeth townsend guard you've been listening to just want to quilt a research podcast coming out of tulane university law school we want to hear from you Join our army, our quilting army. Go to our Facebook page. Suggest people to be interviewed. Suggest yourself to be interviewed. We are excited to hear from you. 
But most importantly, I hope you get a chance to quilt today.